Namaste Angels. This is the weekly love reading for the period of tomorrow, Sunday, December 15th through Saturday, December 22nd, the last day of Sagittarius. Some people will say that the last day was the 21st. You know, it's up to different people. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that debate, but this is the last week that we'll be celebrating any Sagittarian birthdays. So happy birthday to those of you um, recognizing your birth year this week. Um, birthday, rather. Date of birth. <laughs> I'm going to begin with the uh, spread from the masculine's perspective using the Doreen Virtue Romance Angels and beginning with finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in, in your love life right now. The financial issues, I think, are not really issues. They're, there's things that are going on, but it's positive. Um, at least it's by way of finances. People are um, coming into money. Now, there could be some, not negativity, but sadness attached to some, because some of it is, is um, you know, as part of like different inheritances. And, um, you know, because you lost someone, you are now recovering some sort of material or, or financial um, asset. So, um, you know, it could be some sadness attached to it for some of us. But overall, the finances are good um, from what I've seen in the cards lately. Opening to let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. Which could be literal for some. Um, there may be some weddings coming up by the end of this month. Um, I don't know. I'm just feeling some of us may have been already planning and we might be getting married December is a big month for weddings, but this woman here, she's dressed in wedding attire and this is like her flower girl and like some ladies in waiting, maybe her, you know, maid of honor, matron of honor, whatever, bridesmaids. You can also ask for, of course, help from your guides, ancestors, angels. I, my only recommendation is that you always make sure that they are, you know, of the light. Even our ancestors, not all were good. You know what I mean? Um, opening to past life relationship, you have known each other before. Past life relationship. And getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. That is opposite past life relationship. So that's the type of person with whom you'll be discussing, you know, your deepest emotions. And opening to attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. This card really is about like the law of attraction. And what this means is basically what you put out. You put out positive energy. That's what you're going to get back. I'll do one more. And it's back to let your friends help you. So on this note, I'll definitely cut, ask for, and accept support from others. About the ability to give and receive and this is the season as they say of giving um, it is um, important to know how to do both without agenda you know without, unconditionally Let go of control issues. Allow this situation to unfold naturally. The overall uh, energy for this week is express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Divine Feminine. I had it right the first time. <laughs> the Masculine as it relates to the Feminine. And himself, you know, with regard to the union, of course, the union as a whole, overall, what the masculine would have the feminine do, contribute, surrender toward the union, helping it to happen, to flourish, thrive this week, grow, what he himself is willing to do. What the universe would have the two do, but they will first have to affirm to it, commit, and then they can expect you know, full support from the universe if they do themselves and the outcome. Divine Feminine. Release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. In the um, advice for the feminine in the 
general reading, you'll see that her advice, I, I didn't pull many advice cards this week. Her advice is from the angel therapy cards also by Doreen Virtue, and it is to clear her energy. So I do think that that, um, is the most important message from this. It's not, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with an ex, although for some it can be, um, literal. I think for most, it is more so having to do with this. This is your ex, this EX here as an express your love, like speaking of your true feelings and not trying to, you know, withhold anything and not withholding anything because you're trying to control the situation because of pride, ego, fear, you know, this is asking you, this is a time to, you know, be your truest and most honest self. When I pick up the express your love also up right behind it is calling in your soulmate. So you need to like express yourself. Maybe this is used screaming out from like the top of the, you know, the mountain, um, you know, that you're in love or something calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. And also upright behind that is worth waiting for. So if it's been taking a long time and been getting frustrated, maybe even, you know, losing faith, this is to re help you to recapture it. Divine timing is that work in your love life. For others of us, yes, there's some sort of core to something to, you know, a past um, relationship, a karmic relationship. And um, we do need to cut those cords. The masculine as it relates to the feminine this week, it is healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. It's not only your parents though. It's anybody who is so impactful upon your life that you can't move on your, as long as you have some sort of disagreement or something going on with them, you can't move on with your life, then you have to address that. And I believe there's two ways to do that. If there is interest, uh, you know, desire and possibility, then you repair the relationship. And if there isn't, then you walk away from it. That's how you heal yourself or, or, you know, and, um, rectify the situation. So this could be the masculine dealing with family issues of his own or as part of the feminine's experience. And maybe even in connection to this release, your ex, you know, that's part of her family issue. If it were, you know, for those to whom this is literal, she might have somebody um, that she needs to close some chapters with too, cut some cords with too. The masculine about himself this week, like what he needs to, as it relates to the union, uh, true love beautiful this is the romance of a lifetime he's been like this for the past several weeks actually like in this kind of headspace um the union as a whole however we must love yourself first your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive i also talked in the general reading about how i felt that this week because of or particularly because of the full moon in cancer it was going to be about nurturing 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 um beginning with ourselves Overall, retreat. Oh, is that glare? I'm sorry. Retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. This has like um that earth energy to it. That a lot of earth energy showed up in the general also. But it's more so about that your need to spend some time um, with nature, meditating, praying, perhaps making intentions. Attempting to manifest your desires to clear your energy of anything toxic, negative emotions, negative cords of attachment. And what the masculine would have the feminine do toward the union this week, it is stay optimistic about your love life. Like I said, people are getting frustrated, um, you know, and maybe losing faith. And then this energy and these messages come through to say like, wait, wait, wait. Not so fast, you know, like good news is coming. Positive thinking and faith is what is going to bring you romance. So this is more of that law of attraction. What the masculine himself is willing to do toward the union, it is separation. Um, so 
sitting here under love yourself first, I connected to retreat. Like one of the things he's willing to do is to work on himself. It's sort of like a nine of earth, which also came up in the general reading as part of the nurturing of, of oneself. He's willing to do that. Some introspection, some, you know, going within alone, um, but also to separate from things that are toxic in his life. You know, this is not necessarily... Or I, I, that I feel really at all, speaking of separation from you, this is speaking of separation from those things that have been, you know, inhibiting him, holding him back, you know, stunting his growth. For some, this, where there is a separation existing already, this is actually like a return from separation. He's well, he's willing willing and ready to give his attention toward the separation that has existed between you and in doing that, you know, like closing the gap and, you know, ending that separation. Over, um, with, I'm sorry, what the universe would have the two of you do, but you have to, um, affirm to it on your own to get the full support. And it is to release yourself of these unrequited loves, like to release an ex, to separate from toxic people and things in your life that are holding you back. This unrequited love card for me, um, from the very beginning, when I first got these cards, right away came to me like, it doesn't always mean un unrequited love. Sometimes it means imbalance. Um, you know, instability, our own instability. You're going to need to go within. But for some, it means unrequited love. And it doesn't necessarily mean between the two people that I'm reading for. It can be other people in their lives. So like an ex, like other toxic people from whom you need to separate. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep those relationships going. So it's time for them to, to end. And the outcome. Wedding. Didn't I say I felt like some people were getting married soon? <laughs> Wedding. Um, for some, obviously, this is going to be literal. And certainly, obviously, for everybody, it is not going to be literal. We're not all going to run off and get married. Um, but this also, this card is also, for me, representative of the sacred marriage. You know, so the sacred union, the divine union that exists between the parties. And that can apply to everyone. I'm going to do a spread more so from the perspective of the universe right, as opposed to that one, which was from the masculine with what I call the hashtag creepy deck. Um, those of you who've been watching me for a while know why I call it the hashtag creepy deck is because when they arrived at my house, they were creepy. I am an, an actual psych, a real psychic. My daughter is also psychic. Or my mom is psychic. It just, it's in my, it runs in my family. Um, and as soon as I, took them out. My daughter said like, Ooh, what are those? Um, and they had some really funky energy on them. And, um, <laughs> people through my screen, you know, on the other, on the other TV, because since I read for other people, intuitive people and sometimes psychic people and mediums and empaths, some of them could feel the funky energy and were like, they, they were grossed out by it too. Um, also there is, there's, there's cards in here that the descriptions don't make any sense and you can, you know, tell that whoever did them didn't know what they were talking about. Um, and probably <laughs> the most poignant is the twin flame card. A twin flame union or relationship is described as one that is effortless. So anyone that is actually a twin flame knows that's not true. So from that moment between the energy that was on them and the, the bogus descriptions, I just started calling them the hashtag creepy deck. So anyway, I'm going to use, they're made by somebody named Amira. If anybody's interested in getting them, I'm not, you know, promoting them nor, nor, you know, I'm not dis encouraging nor discouraging you from getting them. I'm telling you my experience with them and why I call them the hashtag creepy deck. I'm beginning with freedom and opening to fun times. Maybe I can move some of this light. Is that better? That's more light. That's not better. Nope. Looks like it depends on how I hold them. So I'll, I'll do my best. Um, brunette female. I guess I have everything in a different position, you know, than I usually do. I don't know. I don't remember moving anything, but it is what it is. Um, brunette female is by karmic feminine energy in this deck. And I'm doing karmic in with air quotes. 
um, for those of you who are more new, new um, viewers, because all of these um, sort of destined relationships, clandestine um, relationships, people that have these um, serendipitous meetings and then, you know, the, these soul connections, all of them are karmic. All, not just the bad ones or the ones that we view, you know, as outsiders looking in as negative. They are all karmic. Karmic means like of the universe, destined and meant to teach you a lesson. So even the divine unions or the so-called twin flame unions are karmic. So that's why I put it in quotations when I mean karmic as it's come to be known more so as a derogatory term. So anyway, um, this, this is, this would be that, <laughs> that karmic feminine energy. And somebody needs to, um, break free of that sort of energy. This could, that could easily be attached to release your ex, um, or the separation, you know, so for the masculine and the feminine cards that we saw a moment ago, freedom, young male is back. He was with us last week too. Um, so many of you know, on this journey, there are quite a number of May, December relationships, you know, where one is older, one is younger. That freedom card just doesn't want to be seen. It's like invisible when the light hits it. All right. And children, which is like a, a, an empress like card for me, um, about new beginnings, uh, abundance. Threes are about abundance, creativity. Um, it can be about a party of three, but it's more, it's one of the more happier party of three kind of cards. So maybe, you know, probably not negative, not like a love triangle in this deck. It can, for some, have to do with actual children. And you may need to not, not you don't want to free yourself from your children, but you may need to free yourself from, like, that household. It might be unhealthy from, like, their other parent, their father, or their mother, whichever is applicable to you. Children. And Friendship. Sometimes, um, even with relationships that we have with our children's parents, it's, there comes a time when we, if we can, if you're blessed, really, um, you can move to friendship. So it's not like, um, you know, your dynamic changes as opposed to having to become enemies because you're not, you know, in love anymore or because you've, you've decided to co-parent instead of living under the same roof. You don't have to become enemies children. In fact, it's healthier if you don't, if you can avoid that. Oh, the young male is back. And also I'm being shown true love. So on this note, I will cut. open relationship in this deck and in the divine union or twin flame journey for me open relationship is more so a relationship out in the open than what we would traditionally think of when one says open relationship so in a 3d situation open relationship is um inviting probably you know other people in or one or both of us is seeing someone else or something like that. And since that's more of what is actually typical already in a divine union or twin flame union, at least along the journey, um, then what is, what becomes an open relationship is when you're really like living in your truth, like out in the open, living out in the open, living out loud as they say. And freedom is still the overall energy. This can also, um, I didn't mention, be attached to air signs and maybe most specifically the sign of Aquarius, which is all about freedom um, and humanitarianism. 
divine couple or being for those of us who are single recent past masculine tire self near future blocks to the union what the feminine can do what the masculine can do What the universe would have the two do with the same, similar to the last spread, they'll have to first affirm to it themselves and the outcome. Divine couple or being is short term. So some of us may have a short term break that separation perhaps um, will apply to us in, 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 as it relates to this or is applying to us currently. And again, we're going to come out of it soon for the purposes of handling some other business. You know, some of the other things we saw, like the healing of family issues and, and, and all of that. It is short term. It is temporary. It is a pause. And it may not even manifest in the form of separation. For some of us, this is just like a delay to something we have going on. It's kind of like a page of swords sort of energy um, or hangman, the period of, you know, an, like an air of suspension, a moment of limbo, short term. Could be drama too. Like it could be like a, a minor conflict, a minor disagreement, argument, short term pain, short term heartbreak hurt um the recent past travel this could be literal for some of us having there's been a lot of this visiting back and forth um also i associate this card with the retrogrades as in like revisiting in a figurative sense uh how retrogrades force us to like go back and bump into people we haven't seen in a million years and all that kind of stuff I uh, also connect this with the with the energy of um, like the chariot card from the traditional tarot, which represents the sign of cancer. This could be other water signs in general, this water here. And it is about moving into more positive period in our lives, calmer, stiller waters. There's no waves in this water here. It's very still. The skies are very clear and still. So it's moving toward positivity. It's like something... There's something on the horizon. Again, we may have a pause. We may have a break. It may not be tomorrow that, you know, this we're going to be experiencing paradise, but it is on the horizon. So something happened in the recent past to like get that going. In the near future, spiritual growth happening. This could be as a result of both, as a result of, you know, Maybe going back to revisit some things and to close some chapters and handle some business in our lives and taking the time out to do that. You know, taking a short term pause together, um, leading towards spiritual growth for us. Right. The lesson that's the karmic le learning, the karmic lesson involved or completing it. Masculine's higher self. Ice King. This card represents the. Um, the air signs, all three of them, of course, uh, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, also um, the planet Mars. This guy's very Martian and emperor like for me. It could be a father, a father figure, a married man, a divorcee, a widower, you know, somebody with children. Um, as Mars, uh, the signs that Mars represents Aries, Scorpio. Of course, Leo coming into play with his pet lion here. And this is really about taking back like ownership and control of your own life and, you know, living the way you want on your own terms, open relationships sort of style. Blocks. Boom. <laughs> That's pretty clear and to the point. Again, this is the, you know, karmic feminine energy. Um, for me in this deck. So this could be easily be his ex or again, like I said, the mother of his children. This is a father figure, a married man or a divorcee, a widower, somebody who, you know, um, mature. All of those things come through when I pick up this car. But the, yeah, this block is very straightforward. It could be an actual female. 
that's, you know, involved in your life, impactful upon your life, or it can just be, you know, coming through in the form of an energy. Where it is an actual female, it is often a cancer. Like I said, the travel card represents a cancer or a Leo or a Leo cancer, like a cuspian. Maybe the, you know, like the 23rd, the 24th of July. Um, what the feminine can do to help herself this week, mature man. So this one is also very emperor-like. Um, you may want to be a leader in your life, take back control of your own life too. Um, and keep it like I think I feel like that's part of your lesson that you've learned to stop giving people the reins, you know, to your life. You're going to maintain control. There can be something actually going on with a feminine father or something she's dealing with um in connection to her father, even in the case where like her father may have passed on, there's something that she's got going on there. And that may be a reason for a pause for her. Like she's got to disconnect from everyday stuff and handle some business too. Um, what the masculine can do, gifts. It's sitting here next to the spiritual. So he can work on completing this karma so that um, his, his gifts are increasing as a result. For some, this is, is um, literal too. And there is somebody who is expecting a gift from you. I'm not recommending masculine that you buy this person a gift. <laughs> I'm not. But of course, you know, I'm not just getting in the way of your free will either. You can. But there is... Um, there is somebody who's hoping for a gift from you, masculine. And that gift may involve a visit, may involve travel. You to visit them or them to visit you. And I guess those to whom that applies will know. Um, but the universe would have the two of you do, but you have to affirm to it. And it will, it totally wants to help you with this if you commit to it yourself first. Long distance, maybe trying to figure out how to travel. See, I told you I felt that. Long distance, this is closing the gap. And here, you see the difference in the two pictures? Here the water is, there's still something on the horizon. Our ship is coming in, we're waiting for it to come in. But this water is a little rockier. So the universe will help us to get here. And maybe again, to visit too. So if you're wondering like, how am I going to, I can't afford it or... It, there's no flights, like something will open up um, and make it possible if you have first affirmed to doing it. Like, I'm going, I'm going to get there somehow. Now, for some of us, it's not literal, you know, it's a metaphoric, it's figurative, closing the gap. But still in those cases, you commit to it, you Put your eyes on the prize and say, I'm, I'm going after this thing. And the universe will help you too. And me as well. <laughs> you know, I always talk like I'm only talking to other people. Yes, I'm, I'm here on the journey with you. Uh, and the outcome. Boom. Told ya. This is going to lead you right to where you want to be. Whether this is you, the courting man, showing up to do some courting or... Um, you know, we, we are the lucky recipient of somebody like this at our door. This is the outcome if you put in the, the work, the effort of clearing your energy, of addressing situations in your life that you've been guided to address, healing family issues, dealing with karmic situations, and pledging to do things that you know you must do, even if you don't know how you're going to do it. Believing that you have the ability to manifest, you know, the outcome, the desired outcome that you have is affirming to the universe. You have faith that it can come to pass. And then that's how you're going to bring these things about.
Doreen Virtue and ooh, I saw that like a big orb. Um, Doreen Virtue Animal Tarot to try to get an idea of maybe what signs we're dealing with this week, or at least what elements. We're beginning with Earth. The Prince of Autumn, trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and funny. It's important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor. Once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action and get as much accomplished as possible. And opening to the Queen of Water, who is compassionate, loving, giving, and psychic. This is a time of deep emotions and heightened intuition that you can trust completely. Be mindful that you don't ignore your own needs while caring for others. I told you about that in the beginning. I, I felt this about the Cancer Moon. So this could be showing up because of Cancer. Um, the Queen of Summer is indeed a Cancer, Pisces or Scorpio or someone likened to those traits or attributes. And the Prince of Autumn is a Virgo, Taurus or Capricorn. So in addition to the um, Cancer Full Moon, This week is also um, the winter solstice, the day before the Cancer New Moon, um, full moon rather, on the 22nd. On the 21st is the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. And, you know, subsequently we'll be having shorter and shorter nights leading up to the springtime. You know, shorter by this much, you won't be able to tell, you know. Um, it is also a, on the Hebrew calendar, the feast and fast day of the 10th of Tevet, the month of Tevet, which is a commemoration of the destruction, unfortunately, of um, King Solomon's temple. So that's the other stuff we have going on around us this week. Um, opening to the nine of summer, now's your time when your dreams are coming true. Don't worry about how this will happen. Just give gratitude to God for all that you have and all that's still to come. This is what I was talking about a moment ago when I was saying you don't have to try to figure out how it's going to work. You just have to affirm that you believe that it can and then you're going to get the support you want. You know, I so said like if you're planning a trip, plan your trip. Prince of Autumn. And the High Priestess. This is a time of pause, or to pause rather, and to reflect, not to take action. Trust in your spiritual gifts as nothing is hidden from your divine intuition. So this reminds me of what we just saw too, with the, the pause, the short-term pause, and the gifts, and the spiritual growth. All of that is high priestess. Um, Major Arcana card two, twos are about faith, and also partnership, relationship. And the high priestess can be a water sign. Um, She's a Gemini in real life, but in the tarot, she can be a water sign too. I think looking at this card in particular, more so a Cancer with this owl here, um, or maybe a Scorpio with the butterfly. Although in the tarot, um, yeah, this card I think would be, it's connected to, when it's connected to water signs, I think it is more so Cancer. Could be a Pisces also. Prince of Autumn, and the Nine of Spring. You've worked hard, and what you've created is impressive and worthy of protecting. Annoying challenges may pop up, but don't worry. You'll get through them, just as you have in the past. So something could get on the way, let's say, for example, of a Knight of Earth's plan, right? They are the kings of plans. Something could get away, but we're still supposed to continue with our plan and trust that it will work out as it always does. And as it always will, when you have that faith and belief in, you know, in your own manifestation power, especially with the support of the universe. So that's the kind of thing I was talking about a moment ago, too. And this, it just keeps like reaffirming what I'm saying. If you had a plan, I'm not saying if you weren't going anywhere for you to pack your bag and think that you can go to. I mean, not, not that you can't, but <laughs> if you had no means of traveling, I'm not necessarily talking to you, although nothing's impossible for you either. And you can possibly manifest yourself a trip, too. If you were planning and you, you, know, you came across a bump, a rough patch, and you don't know how you're going to move forward, I say to you specifically, um, keep, keep going forward. Like you can persevere over this. Prince of Autumn. 
And the princess of summer, sensitive, kind, open-hearted, and inexperienced, and in my opinion, a Pisces. But can also be a Cancer or a Scorpio, maybe one younger than you, young male, <laughs> like the last spread. Um, you can expect to kindle a new romantic relationship or a close platonic friendship. You may suddenly receive an emotional message from someone. So you may hear from somebody you haven't spoken to in a while, perhaps, or somebody you have spoken to in a while. Uh, or you could even be invited to a social event by the courting man who may be an earth sign. Sun, moon, arising. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Or water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Prince of Autumn. And the eight of autumn, it's the perfect time to learn all you can by returning to school, taking a seminar or conducting research. Do your best work and the law of attraction will bring you prosperity and career advancement. I'm going to say relationship advancement too, or just life advancement because the it doesn't have to be actual school as far as I'm concerned. It can be the school of life. It can be like they say, experience is the best teacher. It can be that. You're just experiencing something and so you're growing from that. You're learning. Um, it can be the school of hard knocks, unfortunately, sometimes. Really, um, bottom line, where you put your effort is where you're going to get your reward, is what the aid of um, Earth is all about. And it's the five of Earth, or autumn, which is a like fear of lack, basically, to summarize this one. Focusing upon the negative or worrying about money or your career, or I was going to say even a relationship, can block your progress. Because trust and faith are at a low point, it's not the best time to start your you know, own business or to become self-employed or maybe even to enter a relationship. So we've got to pick that up if you're in that place of fear. So that card was also reaffirming some of the things that we've seen already. The uh, law of attraction and manifestation work in such a way that if your thoughts and the words that you speak over yourself and think about yourself and humanity and those connected to you, your loved ones are positive, then that is what you bring in. So when they're not, obviously you do the net, you do the opposite. And we've seen a couple of times here about being optimistic, being positive, law of attraction, manifestation. So that um, reaffirms that too. Our overall energy is the ace of summer. So all about reunions, people getting back together, love being, you know, reestablished um, reawakened, but also new love, single people meeting somebody who, you know, can really make them happy like genuinely happy. Other new, uh, maybe unexpected blessings in our lives, new, you know, homes or living arrangements, moving in together, engagements, marriage, this is the beginning of a new emotional experience for you. It may be the first blush of romantic love, the rebirth of a current relationship, or the awakening of spiritual gifts and insights. Yes, it can be clarity and, and spiritual growth too. Crown of the masculine is the three of summer. You have an exciting reason to celebrate, such as an engagement, wedding, graduation, or a birth announcement. Remember to cherish those you love. So it can be any of those things you may have going on, but also the three of summer for me is about reunion. And since this is specifically the love relationship, I'm going to say of, you know, of couples who, of a romantic interest. Maybe somebody you didn't date necessarily date before, but somebody from your past coming into your life and, 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 you know, reunion for the right reasons. Masculine surrounded by, ooh, the three of winter also. Sadness is a part of life, but you don't have to endure it alone. You may need a little time to heal, but once you work your way through the emotions, you'll be stronger than before. This could be connected to that separation that he needs from other people in his life that's toxic. Um, we'll look, we'll look a little deeper into this in a moment. Masculine's subconscious. It is the princess of spring, energetic, outgoing, optimistic, and creative, creative opportunities that you feel passionate about are flooding your way. 
personal growth and broaden horizons will spark fresh and original ideas. Crowning the feminine. It's that fear of lack. Okay, it's about all lack in all areas. Um, like for relationships, it, for me, it could be um, like being fear of abandonment, fear of commitment sometimes too. Um, just fear of like repeating patterns like where your relationship lacked before, you're going to do it again with the new person or where you felt you lacked in your relationship, you know, like you're going to disappoint the next person, all that kind of worry. Feminine surrounded by the dreamer, however, the fool in the traditional tarot, you are starting a new, in, a new adventure. Run free and take a leap of faith. And in the feminine subconscious, it is justice. Fair decisions will be made after all the evidence is received impartially. Have compassion for others and try to see all sides of a disagreement. For some, this is um, divorce, all right? Here is like the loss. Here's your new path. You never walked this path before, all right? You're completely separated from a family. Maybe that's what the Three of Winter is about, mirroring this here. In some, you know, masculine's life, divorce on the other end of it. Um, and, you know, injustice. An actual legal situation, legal parting. For others, this is just about um, the scales being evened out, like where you have been feeling lack um, and maybe thereby manifesting it into your life. Like the universe wanting to step in with a, with a stronger energy, a more karmic energy. Eights represent karma. Um, and even out the scales. You know, balance the scale. It's like it's time for your, your just due. Crowning. Very nice. It is Major Arcana card six, the lovers. True and long-lasting love finds its way into your life. Follow your heart with caring actions and choices. The lovers represents the sign of Gemini. At the root, our foundation... So maybe what led to some of this. The three of autumn. Your most satisfying and profitable career or relationship experience comes from following your passions, listening to your heart and doing what brings you joy. Your life purpose is best fulfilled by allowing your talents and true self to shine forth out into the world. Some of us, we start a relationship um, at our job or office or something at some point. And it's led us here. For others, the three of autumn, and in general, the three of autumn um, represents, it's similar to judgment, at least for me, in that it represents abundance that is earned. So like you did something, you've put a, enough deposits into the karmic bank, then again, it's time for your justice. You are due love. You are due like a healthy relationship, a new start a fresh path, an adventure. And so that's what you're being given um, as like a promotion, raise. For others of us, this is connected again to spiritual growth um, because it is about promotion and raise, like the, like the universe, God giving you a promotion or raising you up, right? If the universe elevates you, then it's more of a spiritual sense, but you will have that manifest down here too. You get a promotion from there, like as above, so below. You'll see promotion in your life down here too. Um, at the heart of the matter, there's that travel card. <laughs> this is travel. Um, again, whether it is literal or figurative, we are moving into calmer, stiller water. Some of us will actually be traveling and maybe across water, right? Maybe across water. That's, that still doesn't mean necessarily a long distance. It can be local, like somebody coming to visit me from Jersey City or vice versa. <laughs> you know, it's very short, but we got to cross water to do it. Or even Brooklyn, for that matter. The challenging times are coming to an end. And you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let the past go and embrace the happier times ahead. So right away, we see that this three of winter, it's something from the past. And we have an opportunity to move into better times. The six of winter sitting here under another six major, I mean, yes, major arcana card, the lovers. 
I was going to clarify these with some more tarot cards, but first I think I'll clarify them with the universal love oracle beginning with love and opening to emergence. So this is like a rise to promotion again, elevation from a darker place to, you know, a much more positive one, one of light. Love. And the mystic, which is like another high priestess. Again, can be an air sign or a water sign. And maybe of the air signs in this case, um, as opposed to in the tarot, where it would be, and in real life, where it would be Gemini, maybe more so Aquarius here with the star over this woman's um, third eye chakra. The star represents the sign of Aquarius in the tarot, and it is about our dreams coming true, our prayers being answered, our wishes being granted, also about communication. That communication can be telepathic with the high priestess. You know, she's capable of that. This is also about paying attention to your intuition. Um... And like employing all of your information, you know, core paths to information. So, you know, wisdom, intellect, intuition, whatever you have available to you, gut feelings, listen to it all. And they all are likely to have having to do with love. Also be receptive and open to communications and to making communication in connection to love. High Priestess and answer prayer. I told you. I said this means answer prayer, genes coming true, wishes being granted. Again, more Aquarius and also Scorpio or air and water, but more importantly, the answer is the answer prayer. Mystic. All right. Here's Tantric Union. This could be some more telepathic conversation and communication, but maybe even, you know. And that is a means of healing, and so is this. This is about healing head to toe, obviously, and full surrender, full vulnerability, and allowing for the universe to, you know, heal you as it will. Mystic and birth. So on this note, with the fresh start, um, this could be the rebirth of relationship. It can be... A new relationship, the right, the birth of something new and beautiful. It can be about rebirth as well. Mystic. And Trilogy of Light. So it's another three. That last card just ha had three rays. I started to mention them and I didn't, but there's been a lot of three. We've got a three here, three here, three here. There was um, three sails on the boat with the woman that was um, long distance that was in the last spread in this position. And now we have these three beams of light and there was three rays of light in the last spread too, in the last card rather too. Overall energy is expectancy. And when this card shows up, it means we need to let go basically of our like expectations. Like it, when this card shows up, it means that we've been trying to control the universe. We've been trying to tell it like when to bless us, how to bless us, how large, what way, you know, what time. And we can't do that because all that, well, we can, but all it's going to do is to block our blessings. It's not going to make them come in how we want them. So release all of that. Surrender like the woman in the transience card. And that will open up um, the flow to abundance. I changed my mind actually about this card. I, I want to clarify it with this first, <laughs> with the tarot card first. So I'm um, showing you upright because I like to always take the next upright card. So this one's upside down. I'm not going to use this one. I'll take this one. It's the princess of summer, sensitive, kind, open-hearted, inexperienced. You can expect to kindle a new romantic relationship or a close platonic fr friendship. You may suddenly receive an emotional message from someone or be invited to a social event. So um, very possibly a direct water sign, although it does not have to be Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, um, was who hurt. Maybe the feminine, maybe cause this feeling of loss and fear. Um, or was hurt, 
or both and is going to try to reappear in your life or the person has reappeared in their life. And it is a good time to go ahead and, and move on and try to start anew with the six of winter or swords here at the heart of the matter and an overall energy of the ace of summer. I'll take a look at the next card too because it's upright. Sometimes I get greedy. It's the ace of spring. There's a new opportunity for you. So things didn't work out how you wanted them last time, but you have a chance to start over. Don't um, risk taking it from yourself. This is the energy of joy stealing, the seven of winter. It can be about actual theft, but if we lack confidence, then we're stealing our own joy. Caution will help you to avoid the loss of valuables, including non-material resources, such as time or peace of mind. Be aware of the results of your actions, as well as what others might be doing behind your back. Yeah, keep pushing toward um, this opportunity. Don't let anything, including yourself, your own fears, keep you from it. You've worked hard and what you've created is impressive and worthy of protecting. Annoying challenges like a seven of winter um, can pop up and get in your way, but you'll get through them just as you have in the past. Okay, so now get, get back to these. Atop the three of summer in this reuniting is enchantment. And we have like Mars and Venus coming together here. That's probably what's going to make the reuniting possible. Also surrender. You see this woman, she's been through some hurt. So like the three of swords that sits beneath this card, she's been through some hurt. She's got these scars on her face, on her neck and stuff that does not stop her from being willing to try again from being vulnerable again. She's completely nude here, at least on her top. She's topless. Here's her breasts. They're exposed. That's not stopping her. The scars on her face and her neck are not stopping her. Her eyes are closed. Her head's tilted back. She is still um, in full surrender. So that's what you're going to have to do too, masculine. Just let go of any like ego or pride um, or fear, lack of confidence that is preventing you from pursuing, you know, this renewed or new um, opportunity for you because for you know for some it's not um, trying again with the person necessarily that you hurt before it's the fact that you have been hurt or you have hurt people before and so that's made you afraid of trying even with somebody new atop the nine of spring three of swords and seven of swords the ace of spring, the wands, your brand new opportunity there. And the, oh, right. And the page of cups, which is awesome, uh, is balanced. So it's air and water coming together just as this was. Right. That was that air and water coming together. And here too, we see that the masculine, he appears to be crying. So that's like three of swords too. And then here is like the page of cups coming through with comfort and support and love and emotion. His cup runneth over. He might have something to say to communicate, um, but she's here to support him. So even if, you know, there's some fear there, it, she's trying to make him feel like it's a safe place. It's a safe space for him to go ahead and, you know, share those feelings and thoughts that he has that may include an apology or forgiveness right he may be on the forgiving end on the other end of the apology masculine subconscious atop the page of um wands the princess of spring is more fire message from afar so this can be again closing a gap to long distance if it's not actual traveling because um, wands are about movement too in traveling if it's not about actual traveling, it can be um, contact 
phone call, long distance phone call, telepathy. This can also be you receiving a message masculine from the divine and like maybe, maybe Jupiter or Mars giving you a boost, a push and having you to take action in some way with this card sitting in this placement of your subconscious. This is like an action card. You're going to want to pay attention to any signs, synchronicities, messages, dreams, um, but you could get contact again on the 3D level as well with message from afar. And you see here, you got the three of summer atop um, this, all this like worry and again, lack of confidence is what I'm feeling. Lack of esteem here, particularly with the seven of swords. Um, Bob Marley says when the three little birds showed up on his doorstep, they were singing sweet songs of melodies pure and true saying this is my message to you don't worry like let go of it this worry that's here don't worry about a thing every little thing is going to be all right that's what the three little birds um say that's what they just said to me because i was about to move on <laughs> they called me back to that card uh top the five of earth for the feminine is earth connection so you know what feminine we need to spend some time again clearing our energy um Maybe with Mother Nature, out in Mother Nature, if you're able to do that, you live in an area that's still warm enough, it's conducive to that, then do that. Uh, you can bring Mother Nature to you or just take some time, you know, where you feel peaceful um, and you're able to connect with the universe, to talk to it, to pray, to make intentions, to work on your manifestation, to write things down and put them in a God box or set them ablaze or well, however you connect, do that do that and there also may be something going on with you um and an earth sign or you may be the one of this earth sign energy just feeling very um trying to get grounded and thinking of things and approaching things from a very practical manner as opposed to maybe emotionally with your heart or even logically with your mind like an air sign Or passionately, like a fire sign. You're not running after anything either. You're just sort of uh, like flat. And you should be running. You should be taking a leap. You've got this new adventure here. And you, you're expected to take a leap of faith with the fool sitting here. So atop that fool or dreamer in this deck, which is called, is transience. Allowing you, I guess, to get fully um, prepared for your, your new path the feminine does work need to work on her energy this week it's very important i think we've seen it a few times here so we know that it's important atop justice is meditation so this is about coming into balance right justice can be about balance too right here's the scales of justice or balance depending upon how we look at them and meditation also about the need for us um, as individuals to come into balance. And in this placement here, the subconscious, it can easily be about that. And I think it is. And it's connected to this, our need to connect with the divine and mother nature and, you know, sort of get grounded. Atop um, the lovers, golden memories. Golden memories from a romantic relationship that you had, whether it's with the same person or somebody else, are holding you back. When golden memories showed up, shows up, we're guided to only take the positive memories and lessons that we've learned from an, any given experience moving forward and to drop the other stuff as if it is going to burn us to death. <laughs> it is hot, it is on fire, and we have to let it go. That's how you're supposed to, any, anything, any baggage that it's heavy, that it's holding you back, regret and resentment and the inability to forgive and pride and ego and fear and, um, you know, any of these conflated things, they are too heavy. We cannot take them with us. They prevent us from being able to move forward and we need to drop them. So in this case, they're connected to a love relationship and they're preventing you from you know, having this kind of very genuine love again. 
So we're gonna have to work on that. And I think that's more so from the feminine, because she's the one that's that's got all this funky energy around her, or the way it feels and looks from the cards. Atop the three of autumn is eternal flame. So this person, again, that you have either earned, um, you've earned an abundant, you know, love life and relationship that's just going to, you know, be so valuable to you and of which you are so deserving and worthy and it is worthwhile. It's forever too. And again, some of, for some of you, this, all of this, you know, started at work or something. At your office or where you know your place of work maybe you work in a store and they walked in and you met or something at the heart of the matter atop the six of air is the goddess so with the moon with the um i think also with the winter solstice and with the Cancer full moon, so this is the 21st, the 22nd. I think they're giving us some timing here. Um, we can really expect to let go of funky stuff and give way to something more positive if we're first willing to surrender and like let go. Let the universe bless you, it will. For further advice, I'm going to um, my Keepers of the Light Oracle by Carl, no, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle Gray. I don't know where Carl came from. Beginning with Horus in the Cosmic Gateway. Your thoughts are magnetic and powerful. So this is about the manifestation and intention and stuff that we've seen over and over uh, in our spreads tonight. Miraculous changes are occurring. And Paul the Venetian, experiencing grace. Share your gifts with grace. Waves of inspiration and love are coming to you. Horus. That might be another message. Not, not this one. The Venetian. Paul the Venetian. Another message to the masculine. Again, it doesn't have to be a big elaborate gift. Um, but a, a, I think a gift period will be a surprise in a lot of cases from you guys. And so those of you who are moved to get it and you're like, oh, should I really? Yes, you should, because I keep feeling it and seeing it. Opening to St. Germain, karma releasing, move beyond drama, create your own path and make room for good energy. And Jawal Cool, Dharma unfolding. Remember that you're on a path Take one step at a time to happiness and also are being shown Sanat Kumara, light activation. Sign your light. Your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. St. Germain. And we're back to Paul the Venetian. So on this note, I will cut. Share your gifts with grace. You see? So like with that, don't, with, with, without um, this fear, and without this lack of esteem and lack of confidence, you know, you go in there and give her her gift. If, if, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm seeing. Waves of inspiration. So you're receiving some sort of inspiration, some sort of motivation, guidance to do this. And love. Waves of love also are forcing you to do this. They're coming to you. So follow it. St. Germain. Diana, focused intention. Think about what you desire. Didn't I say this earlier? <laughs> Set your sights high and expect the best possible outcome. I know I said that. I know I said that. Expect the desired outcome. There goes Raphael too, to reaffirm. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Every time I was about to open my mouth again, it was like, Here's another one. Here's another one. All right. He's gone. And in some cases, just hearing from you is going to be a gift. Um, overall energy is Lady Nada. Heart awakening. Awaken to acceptance and divine love. 
Give and receive in balance. Is this another message about the gifts or what? Yes, absolutely it is. Um, yeah, as I was saying, um, for some of you, you don't have to buy anything. It's like just, just hearing from you is going to be the gift. Okay, so further advice to the masculine from the Dorming Virtue and Romance Angels is give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. So I think this is more about giving. This, again, the season of giving and receiving. If you just give some of your energy, even if it's not an actual gift, I think, again, that's going to be appreciated very much so from you, masculine. Feminine, for us, you deserve love. You are lovable. That's why I'm trying to tell him to give you something. <laughs> Um, and it's very Sagittarius energy, which is what he has down here. Message from afar, masculine, you're being moved again to make some sort of contact at least, uh, you know, and say, you know, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever it is, or whatever you have on your chest or mind to say. Feminine waiting and is deserving of, of something, some sort of communication and love in general. You are lovable. But this, I just wanted to point out, was, you know, this card is representative of the sign of Sagittarius, and so is this one. Um, from the hashtag creepy deck to the masculine, twin flame. Twin flame. So this is the energy that surrounds you this week. You know, it's, it's one of love, and you're, again, being guided to pursue it. Feminine. Money. Value. Worth. You deserve. You are worthy. You are lovable, you are loved, you are valuable, you are valued. From the Universal Love Oracle to the Masculine Golden Path. So you're doing good, stay the course, keep on path. This is very, um, you guys know this is my um, Wizard, of the, uh, Wizard of Oz card. It is about dreams coming true which we've seen a few times tonight, things about dreams coming true, prayers being answered, right? Somewhere over the rainbow, that's where dreams come true. If we keep on the path, you know, like in the yellow brick road or like with the yellow brick road, they kept on the path because they were headed toward the Emerald City. We keep on the path toward the Emerald Ray and it's going to be toward that very divine healing and more Archangel Raphael and all his sirens. <laughs> And for us, feminine from the Universal Love Oracle, healing sounds. I, again, I, I think it's about there's something to be said here. There's some effort to be put forth on the part of the masculine toward the feminine. And that's going to be music to her ears, like birds singing. It's just going to sound beautiful. Um, for more a more literal take on this feminine, you know, healing sounds is any genre of music that you're into, motivational speaking, guided meditation, binaural tones, which are my personal favorite, um, sounds of the ocean, sounds of burning logs. It could be Yule log, whatever you're into, something that's going to help you to get into like a meditative state. And, and connecting with the divine and or find your peace, your zen, your center. From the Doreen Virtue Animal Tarot to the Masculine, it is the Hermit. So this is another indication of your need to go within and do some introspection. We've seen it a few times. And some self-nurturing. Take time for contemplation, to retreat and to go within. Be a beacon for others on their path to spiritual enlightenment as well. So if you can help to bring somebody else clarity then do so. And again, I think that that's another hint to you, hint, hint, as it relates to the feminine. If you can bring her clarity on something that you've kept her in the dark about, um, you know, there was no closure or whatever. If you don't, she didn't understand why you guys had, you know, drama going on between you, what the argument was about. You can bring some clarity, shed some light, not to, not to belager old stuff. Cause we really want to let that go. But, um, 
again, just making a kind gesture can make all that go away. Like that's enough. <laughs> that's enough to clean the slate. Feminine for us, it is victory having triumphed maybe over some of these old feelings and maybe victory as it relates to, um, you know, dropping this hot bag of shit so that we can really be in a place where we're open and ready for love, receptive to, to giving and receiving as it relates to love. You may receive a promotion like from the universe, God raising you up, the universe raising you up, promoting you. You might be chosen for a scholarship, find that you're singled out for a special recognition. And it's because you've done an amazing job and you deserve, you deserve all the attention, whatever's coming to you. And lastly, from the Keepers of the Light Oracle to the Masculine, Sir Nuno send life force. Express your driving passion. Told ya. They're going to beat you over the head with this message this week. Sensual and sexual powers are being increased for you, Masculine. So go for it. And Feminine, Krishna, devotion. Trust your spiritual guidance. Your commitment has been recognized and you are loved unconditionally. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the love reading. If you did like the video, please actually like the video on YouTube by checking the thumbs up button. I'm so sick of having to ask to do this, but that's the way that they work. Um, <laughs> share, subscribe if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, and then also the um, bell button so that you get notifications thank you to everyone my viewers and sponsors and subscribers both here and on patreon i'll be back with the moon reading if you need services from me you can get me on any of my social media or queen of swords lightworker.com namaste So